and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. I'm Abdullah Oduro and welcome. Why do we fast? Generally, we fast in order to deprive ourselves of something to reach a greater goal. We give up something to receive something greater. So when you invest, you give something to receive something like in zakat, you give your funds or you give your, 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 what you own in order to receive purification and in, increase or barakah, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ramadan, yes, we do this to receive blessings, but we deprive ourselves of something that is permissible and allowed for us for a greater purpose. That is why we primarily we fast. And what do we want to receive or what is that greater purpose or greater goal? It's to be conscious of God's presence upon us, to be mindful of his greatness. And that greatness will increase us in our worship of him. The more knowledge that we have of him, the more opportunity we have to get closer to him in the way that he wants us to. And fasting is one of the ways that he wants us to and he has prescribed for us. As we've mentioned, chapter number two, verse number 178, where Allah says, oh, you have believed. Fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon the people before you. Perhaps you may come, become of the righteous. Now, fasting is a prescription that Allah has obliged upon us. Let's stop here for a minute. Consider this. Allah obliging something on you, making something obligatory for you. When we look at his name of Ar-Rahman, the merciful, being that he withholds anything that is harmful for you from you. Anything that causes harm to you, he relinquishes that and keeps that away from you. And Allah being uh, uh, Al-Alim, the knowledge of you, of what you conceal and what you reveal, what you hide and what you make apparent to people. He knows your feelings. He knows what you're hiding. And Al-Hakim, that he appropriates that knowledge at the perfect time, perfect place, perfect situation. When we look at that and remember that, we remember that if he obliges something upon us, let's not forget that that obligation, the fact that it is obligatory and not recommended, if we were to do it, it's best for us. That's where your iman and belief and trust and love and submission in him comes into play. That is where the closeness and relationship is established and strengthened further, allowing and forming that conviction in him. So when he prescribes something, the approach of the believer, the strong believer, says whatever he obliges me to do, I hear and I obey. As Allah mentions in another portion of the Quran, they're the ones that say we hear and we obey, the believers. So the obligation of Ramadan upon us should be something that we should haste to do. Yes, it's going to be difficult. No eating, no drinking, and no intimacy from sunup to sundown is going to be difficult, but understanding the purpose and goal behind it, which should serve as a driving mechanism behind continuing and staying strong. So he says, for those that believe it has been obliged upon you as the people before you, this was a means for the people before us, from the Christians and the Jews and the likes of them, that fasting was a means of obtaining righteousness. That's why he concludes the verse with, perhaps you will be of the righteous because some of us may fast and we're thinking about food. Some of us may fast and we're thinking about our spouse. You as a convert, it may be difficult. It will be difficult in the beginning, that first week, but realize and stay focused and keep your eyes on the prize. Look at the end of the tunnel. Know and remember, if Allah made it obligatory upon me, if he said I have to do it, 
I trust in him and know that there is something better on the other end of this.